welcome. This is Three Comic Money. We're on comicbookinvest.com. Um, this week we have John Arcudi with us. Uh, we are so excited to have have him with us. Uh, you recognize his name. He's been on hundreds of books. Um, he's done some he's done some pretty cool stuff. We will we'll hopefully talk about that. But he has chosen an awesome category for us. Uh, talking about uh, black creators and comic books, whether it's artists or writers or both or letterers, just trying to bring awareness. Um, John, you you do a great job on your Instagram um, where you you throw out. And I, I, I've commented a few times just going, where the heck? Who is this guy? And you 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 bring credit to a guy and then you go, I just want to celebrate him. And you, you've done a good job. And I've noticed that probably for the past at least six months. I know you've probably been doing it longer, but that's when yeah. I've really started following you. Yeah, I've been doing it since I got on Instagram, which is, I think, 2015. So um, what, what made you think of doing that or start doing that? Well, I, it's, that's just, I did, nothing made me start. I've been doing it forever. Like, um, I got on Facebook a million fucking years ago. Can I swear? Yeah, it's fine. fine. <laughs> a, mil, a million fucking years ago in um, 2008, um, I think. And um, everyone was using Facebook, as far as I could see, for like, Pissing and moaning, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I was like, "There's this, there's this, this, you know, this, this." They still kind of are. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Well, I'm not on. Facebook um, look at my kids. Look at my food. Or yeah. uh, let's talk politics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. I know I can change your mind. <laughs> I just if I don't like it, I delete it anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, uh, so I was like, this is such a valuable. And remarkable resources become available to us. And this is what you're fucking doing? You know, yeah. and I understand people who want to pimp themselves. That's cool, right? Yeah. Um, I originally got on Facebook because I had a few friends that, that they would only post pictures of their kid, this little girl that they adopted, beautiful little uh, 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 Guatemalan girl. On Facebook, they wouldn't send me pictures. And that's the only reason I joined. <laughs> so I could see pictures of the little girl because I'd met her, real sweetheart. She would had a cleft palate and had surgery. So, you know, when they were in town, I was they, they'd moved out to the West Coast. I'm on the West Coast now, but and they're back on the East Coast. No fucking figure. Anyway. <laughs> um, and so I'd become part of this little girl's life for a few months. You know, it's a long story. So I got on there for that, and the people discovered I was on there and I was like, oh fuck, you know. So, <laughs> so, um, and I just, I decided, you know, like I, all my life, not just my career, all my life, I've been trying to just share beauty and truth. And again, that's the last fucking thing you can do on Facebook or the internet in general. But I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna do it anyway. And so I started sharing like fine artists that people maybe hadn't heard of. And then I decided to start sharing illustrators that people hadn't heard of. And, you know, and, and a lot of my friends, my actual friends said, man, you really know what to do with Facebook. I'm like, yeah, I, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I don't have okay. as many followers as you do, but sure. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's just, I, I wasn't going to change who I was yeah. to get more followers. I wanted to, <clears throat> and then eventually it got to comics artists, like other comics artists who were on, Facebook. So that when I started Twitter and Instagram, I did the same thing. Now I'm off Twitter. I'm off Facebook. I'm just on Instagram. And that's sort of the ideal place for it, you yeah. know, because it's yeah. just images mm -hmm. mostly, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's just, I, I, like I said, I've been this way my whole life. I've been a lover of all kinds of art since I can remember. Um, and you know what they say, uh, uh, pain is alleviated by sharing it and joy is amplified by sharing it. So, um, the and new three comic money mantra. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's ideally, that's what you're doing here, right? Yeah, um, exactly. I, I, not ideally it is what you're doing. That's why we started it. We were so yeah. bored. We, if we were just, we said, look, the three of us talk all day anyway about comics. Why don't we just get on a podcast and do it and we'll invite someone else to join us and yeah. put them through the same misery. Yeah. It'll be great. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, well, you know, I, ideally, like if I, I, in, the, in the case of what we're doing today, uh, you guys will mention someone that a lot of people haven't heard of, or I'll mention someone that yep. a lot of people haven't heard of. And, you know, you, you, you give exposure to, you know, dead or alive, but you give exposure to, yeah. to people who who uh, who deserve more attention, and that's you know that's just been my vibe all along. 
you know, yep. my whole yeah. life. I don't know how to like, thank my dad for that, I guess. No, I, I mean, like, I, I think I was even on your Instagram today and you were giving props to, it wasn't a, it was just someone who'd a freelance illustrator. I was like, man, you're just, you hit everyone. And I think our artists truly appreciate it. You just find something you like. And you're like, hey, I'm going to share this with other people. I have. It's not even like, okay, I'm going to use my my power because I'm John Arcudi. Because I mean, your Instagram handle, people have to know who you are to figure out yeah. that's your Instagram handle. Um, yeah. And which means, hey, I'm just sharing art, and I love doing that. And that, mm -hmm. you've sent me down paths. Now I'm following different <laughs> artists that I normally wouldn't have followed because you've highlighted them. Good. And uh, the same thing, and then. The three of us are ridiculous. Every time we talk to someone, the second we're done up, we go on and Mike will do it in the middle of the show. We go on and start <laughs> buying your books. So if you have a Sorry. book you really want us to buy, we, if he's looks distracted, he is buying your book at the moment. Yeah, uh, I'm, not, I'm not like texting friends or doing something really – well, it's still disrespectful, but I'm being respectfully disrespectful. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> but let's, let's just jump in with our first book because we're going to talk about different curators. Uh, and. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, how about since we're we're gonna let's Pete, you want to share your first book? Let's just jump yeah, that sure. way. Yeah, I can do the first one. Yeah. All right. So for my first book, uh, I wanted to pick uh, this artist because we had him on our show before, and uh, it actually fit the category because this is yeah, you know, um, black writer. Well, actually, black writers, black artist, and actually in this particular case, also cover artist, which is different. And I went with Bitterroot oh, yeah. because this is just. A great book, great story, and I love this cover. This I, I'm a big fan of Prince, so I love this Purple Rain homage. Yeah. Who so is I, I just wanted to go with this one, even though it's not you know worth a ton like the Do the Right Thing cover or anything like that. I just this is a great book, and I just do dig this cover. And uh, yeah, the art's fantastic. Sanford Green is Sanford Green's a great amazing. human being. Yeah, he's a sweetheart, and he's an amazing artist. And I'm really happy that. He's gotten a lot of success both with Bitterroot and and optioning it, or is it they actually started probably didn't started shooting, but they probably uh, yeah got green light money out of it. Well, that sounds a little cynical, but like in this business, man, yeah, you need all the all the money you can get your hands on. San Sanford's just oh god, he's so hugely talented, and a sweetheart. He did reading. It's a great story. I mean, David Walker and Chuck Brown, they do a great job with the book itself, um, and then just him as a, him as an artist, he was a great interview. Uh, here, I guess I could probably show the book better. This is the virgin cover of issue one, but it's, I have lots, uh, I've collected a bunch of them, but it's not, and not just because it was optioned or whatever. It was a good story. And yeah, yeah. And well, again, that may sound cynical, but like I said, for comics, artists, writers, and if it, it's hard to make a living just doing comics. Yeah. And so if they can get some money and then continue to great, great work. That's great. Yeah. Well, we've and that's the the beauty behind the show is we've interviewed artists and writers at so many different places along their comic journey. We we were interviewing guys who are just now quitting their jobs to start writing. Yeah. Um. We, we've interviewed guys who they've been guys like you who've been in the industry for years and and just at different levels. And we've interviewed which we've had we had Axel Alonso on and he was talking about he had just he's done with Marvel and now he's at AWA and like that process and talking through it all. It's fascinating to me though. You're right. Even it doesn't matter where you are on the food chain. If if the if the industry, the movie industry, TV industry isn't reaching out and option it, you don't get to do your passion. Yeah. You're left having to work for the big three or the big four, or however many bigs you think there are in the comic industry, which they, they seem to be shrinking. Um, yeah, so, awesome. <laughs> what your first book is that we're gonna have pull up here, and Pete has a picture of it, so he'll throw it up if you don't yeah, have right. a book. Right. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Not I, I, the comic itself will it's it'll cost you a fortune yeah the comic itself uh, as baker didn't do any interiors but that cover is a fucking masterpiece that yeah. is one of my favorite comics covers of all time it may be my favorite uh matt baker was uh an african-american comics artist i don't know that he did much writing on his own but um as you can see he knew how to draw women. Yes, he did. And and, uh, and this is a great example, uh, you know, giving us several, let's see, one, two, three, four women figures uh, in, in, in varying degrees. And mm -hmm. every single one of them is a goddamn knockout. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of brothers were working in comics. 
uh, back when this was uh, released. He even started in the 40s. And uh, I think this is, has anybody got a year on this? I'm going to in a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I know it was December. <laughs> yeah. And I should know this because I covered this one before on a Golden Age show I used to do. And I know we come across this cover, but I don't remember the year, so I'll let Mike bring it up. It is uh, 1954, December think, 1954. Ah, I was going to say 54, but it's been so long since I looked at it. Um, so, you know, this is uh, an artist who's, who's definitely in his prime. He'd been, been kicking around for a bit, uh, but he's definitely in his prime. And, and this is, they let him do right in this period, from I think 52 on, they let him do these, you know, good girl art covers. And, and with good reason. I mean, I can't think of anybody that draws women more beautiful, more realistically beautiful than Matt Baker. So he's an African-American pioneer. And uh, and we're not just featuring because he's African-American. We're featuring because he's one of the goddamn best ever. <laughs> well, and I, I have to be honest. Like, in t It wasn't until we actually, when we had San Brink Sanford, uh, Mike actually pulled up, and I think he's probably going to share a Matt Baker book. He brought up and talked about Matt Baker. I had no clue. I, I, I knew the name, but I had no clue he was African-American. I had no clue about that. And a lot of, the, and, and Pete and I were talking, I'm ignorant a lot of times to where the nationality or anything. I look at a name and I just go, hey, I like that artist. I'm going to collect them. I don't care anything about yeah, just the name. Well, that's, that's how you should be, you know? Yeah. Like if you're in the clan and you find out Matt Baker, <laughs> pull all those comics out of your fucking collection like an asshole. Yeah, you know, I'll take them. You can send them to me. Yeah, so yeah. you know, uh, absolutely, that's the way it should be. You should never be. Uh, well, right now, obviously, it's a good idea to sort of boost uh, African American-owned businesses, but you should be looking for the best, no matter what. You yeah. know what I mean? And it mm -hmm. doesn't matter who the fucking person is. In a perfect world, it doesn't matter who the fucking person is. And and I mean, just so I'm, I was going to wait until later to do it, but I might as well just go. Um, because and I, you know what? And I've already shared this book, and this falls in the fuck it category because it's okay. so damn gorgeous. I'm going to share it again because I actually own the thing, and it is my oh, favorite. Yeah, you own uh, that? Of course you do. You're holding. <laughs> <laughs> um, this 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 was my grail. This was my Baker grail. I think this is his prettiest cover. That Cinderella love is really close though. Um, for whatever reason, this one beats it out in my mind. Maybe because she's blonde. I don't really know why I like it <laughs> so much more. Um, but th it's this, beauty, man. it's just, it's unbelievable. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than this. Um, and you're right. I don't care if he's purple or pink. It doesn't matter what color he is. This, this, this cover, yeah. it's unbelievable. It has nothing to do with, I mean, yeah, he was the first black, uh, you know, artist in comics that we know of anyway. Right, um, yeah. uh, who cares? I mean, the fact that that got produced is yeah. incredible. So well, it's important to celebrate him. For that reason, but what's really more important? What are you doing? Yeah, my mistake. I, <laughs> right, make I don't want to have a seizure. <laughs> um, what's What's more important is that he's brilliant. You know, like yeah. Will Eisner's Jewish. Who cares? He's a genius. Yeah, I mean, you know? I mean, and that's a cover. Here's an interior. While we're doing oh, this, God, yeah. oh, you got to bust the. <laughs> I mean. For God's sake, I mean, the, the, you, you can tell like, when you look through these. So almost all these jumbo comics have a story by Baker in them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you and can always tell without a signature which one is his. Oh, man. Yeah, it's instant. Like you could just, I mean, look at that. Right away yeah. you could just tell. Just How that long did it take him to draw these, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The interiors, I mean. I mean you know, I mean, this, is, uh, just, this is jumbo 101 for anyone that cares. But, um, but yeah, I mean. That you know, you, and you're flipping through, and the other art's good. It's, it's like Jack Kamen and guys like that. And you're like, there's yeah. good stuff in here. And then you get to the Baker store, and you're like, oh, well, everybody <laughs> else sucks. <laughs> yeah, he was, a, he was a real, apparently, he was bisexual. Um, but he was also a real ladies' man. And uh, if you've ever seen, like, he did headshots and stuff, like, who the fucking comics did headshots? But if, you saw, <laughs> if you saw pictures of this motherfucker, he was a handsome. Devil. Yeah, yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ, you know, yeah. <clears throat> he was uh, breaking all kinds of barriers. He was amazing. Yeah. He was amazing. <clears throat> I, I like AC Hollingsworth stuff. Another African American artist of the Golden Age. Yep. Um, yeah. But for different reasons. But Matt Baker stuff is so appealing, and AC Hollingsworth did a lot of horror, and as a result, was 
decidedly unappealing. Mm. <laughs> um, but he was great. He was great. His fine art stuff's even better. A.C. Hollingsworth. I highly recommend you look him up. Or he's also known as Al Hollingsworth. What do I got for round two? Uh, so for round two, I had to make sure I put at least one uh, Black Panther book in here because, I mean, apart from my shirt, I mean, apart from my glass, and apart from <laughs> that was my favorite MCU movie, uh, we had uh, Reginald Hudlin and uh, ah. Ken Lashley. This is the second print. I actually like this cover better than the Campbell. I like this cover better than the regular Lashley cover. I just like this image. It's just pretty awesome to me. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Reginald Hudlin, he did House Party, which is one of my favorite movies growing up. Yeah, Reginald Hudlin is a hell of a writer. It's, and, yeah, it's just great stuff. So I had to have at least one Black Panther in here. So after Hemin and Hawn went to do, thinking about Tan and Heasy Coats, but I went this way with the uh, Hudlin and uh, Lashley. Who, who is, did Lashley do that cover? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's Yeah, he's amazing, too. Yeah, he's Why, awesome. I mean, this is irrelevant, but... Uh, I don't really read modern comics all that much. Why is Black Panther uh, a woman? In for for that one, I can't yeah. remember. Did uh, I don't remember if he was just missing or? Yeah, or I don't know what comic book here. dead at the time, but there was just a short stretch where that his sister Shuri took the mantle. Oh, is that for, when uh, he, he became Daredevil? Uh, there was a section where Black Panther became Daredevil. Uh, the Ooh, man, right. the man without fear, it was Black Panther. Uh, took over for Daredevil there for a minute. That's right. When I go missing, I'm going to have a woman take over my spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, sorry. I'm an asshole. <laughs> uh, yeah, Black Panther is itself, that is worth mentioning. I mean, not that Jack Kirby was African-American, but, you know. Well, Ta-Nehisi Ta 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 wrote for, like, The Atlantic and uh, yeah. The Times, I think. I mean, he's he was... Oh, he's a know, big time writer, but a he's legit a writer before that. Um, yeah. So I mean, he's a great, he's a great choice. Very uh, incredibly brilliant. I don't know. If I've heard, I don't know if you've heard him speak like on the behind yeah, the scenes oh, yeah. Yeah. of the movie and stuff. Right. I mean, you just, I just sit there and go, I'm wow. I feel very dumb. And by the way, John, you and I share a college, uh, and uh, and so to feel dumb makes me feel dumber. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> you went to Columbia. Yeah, I went to Columbia for my master's. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I know. Like, That's great. I'm glad you share colleges. I don't know what I mean. <laughs> uh, um, well, and you got your master's in English, I take it. from. Columbia. Yes, I did. Yeah, correct. Oh, well, then, yeah. you, trust me, you're smarter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I got a master's in English. <laughs> uh, I don't know about that, but... Yeah. Uh, we spent time with this guy. I don't know if that's correct. Yeah, uh, yeah, probably not. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna jump, Chris, because the, the book that I chose yeah, is is in line with what we're talking about. My second one, I chose it because it's like it's the confluence of four. I, it's like the quadruple hit, right? So it's Tanahisi Coates on writing. It's Brian Stelfries on pencils, who's an amazing guy. If you no, if, no. Such a great guy. Yeah, great I mean, guy. Amazing. Spent so much time telling stories and, and so <laughs> nice and gracious, not to mention an, an incredible artist. Yeah. Um, then on top of that, it's a hip hop homage cover for a right. black character for a black character. So for those that have never seen the Run the Jewels covers, they're all basically the same cover over and over again. And it's the one pointing and then it's the other with the, you know, with the necklace yeah. hanging. And they're all just different colors of the same, essentially the same album cover. So they're homaged a lot. Um, but I just loved what I, when I, you know, when I was thinking about the topic for the night, this is the second print of the first series uh, that, that Coates did um, second printing of number two. So uh, anyway, I just, I just love it. It's, it's like everything that we were talking about all in one book tonight, uh, literally could just be like, this is my one book for all three choices. But uh, <laughs> it's, a beautiful, it's also just a beautiful book. I think it's a gorgeous cover. Uh, if, it's, a, it's, a Raza, it's a Raza cover for anybody that cares. If Brian did the art, then you know it's gorgeous. It, it is. He he did some incredible A covers for that series too. There's the one that's like the continuous line. Um, it's all one line. I can't remember what oh, number yeah, that is. Yeah. That thing is mind blowing. Uh, mind blowing. He and I talked about that one cover for about a half an hour because he said he's <laughs> such a perfectionist. He said it just yeah, it had to be perfect. It that. took him forever. Uh, I met him. Uh, very briefly, because we were on a panel for the Wednesday Comics. I can't remember what year that was. Probably, I don't go to many cons, so I should be able to remember. 
but I, well, whatever. I, we ended up at a Heroes Con. Mm -hmm. and, Heroes um, again. And uh, he was doing, you know, they, they do artwork there to pay for the con, you know, the rooms and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did this piece of uh, one of the characters from Scooby-Doo, I think it was uh, Daphne, with Scooby. Yeah. But he painted them more realistically than, they, yeah. than, they, than Alex Toth's designs. Huh. And um, and it, the Daphne was beautiful, but Scooby was this. He just painted her like him, like a Great Dane, and I fucking loved it. So on my way out of the con on Sunday, I think I saw him, and I got behind the um, the table, and I went over and I sat next to him. I said, Brian, I saw that piece that you did. That dog is fucking amazing, and he gave me a look <laughs> like, Are you out of your mind? <laughs> like, okay, he was looking at the dog, dog. fucking goofball. And, I and, I and uh, yeah, but he's really a, a real sweetheart. And God, what an artist! Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna sort of keep it the theme with uh, superheroes, but I'm, I don't have Black Panther. I'm going with a new new book, uh, Excellence. But um, it's it's a basically it's a. African American superhero created. It's by Brandon Thomas and Kari Randall, Randolph and Emilio, Emilio Lopez. So you have the the writer and the artist uh, African Americans. Uh, it's a really good story. I've only read the first issue. I wanted to get in and read the rest I of the cover. Yeah, it's a great. Kari Randolph is fabulous. Yeah, Randolph is he is. Uh, the, I, when, I'm slowly learning as the as we're getting different people on, like the the crisscross of they got their start in. It's through Marvel, especially guys like Sanford and Kari and uh, uh, Kari or Car <laughs> Wow, we got two Kari's. We had Kari, Kari Andrews and Kari Randolph uh, uh, talking about Kari Randolph. Like they all got their start sort of doing that anime manga style right. back 15 years ago. And then they slowly moved up and they did video games. And then they end up doing these books and they do their image books and they get their own ownership and create their own stuff. And you're just like, dang, this is what you guys should have been doing. But also understand you got to make your money before you can get the chance to do an image book. Yeah. So cool. That's, I'd never even heard of that book. So thanks, man. Yeah. All right. So let's see what your second book is going to be here. I'm doing right. Model two and one. And then when, which was a thing team up book for people. Mm -hmm. don't know. And then the thing got his own book and Ron continued to do the art. Um, so it was like this incredible run of dozens and dozens of issues by Ron on the thing. And, this is, you know, 1980 something. And still, Ron Wilson, Matt Baker, and a variety of other African American artists in between, if they wanted to make a living, they had to work on non black characters, hmm. which is fine. They could do whatever they want, but they had to. You know what I mean? What I, what I meant by they can do whatever they want, they can draw anything they want to draw. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, they're, they're, they're gifted enough to be able to do that, but they couldn't draw whatever they wanted to draw if they wanted to get paid, you know? So they, they had to draw. They were, I don't want to say forced. No one's holding a gun to anybody's head to do comics. Oh, it feels that way sometimes. <laughs> Tom Wilson is a perfect example because this guy, he has these very, very, very strong pencils. And yeah. as we can see here, anybody can ink him. And it still is very recognizable with this very strong work. You know, he gives weight to characters. He did a couple of issues of um, the Rampaging Hulk and then the regular Hulk because it was a Hulk magazine back in the mm -hmm. yeah. 70s and early 80s. And he was inked by Alfredo Alcala. He was inked by Ernie Chan. He was inked by Fran Matera. He was inked by Ricardo Villamante. And all of them is like, yeah, but that's Ron. You know, you can see that Ron's work is in there. But more importantly, for anybody who's reading the book, there are these weighty, strong, like, I hesitate to use the word important. But from the perspective of a kid who was younger than I was, that was buying that book, I think important works. It's important art. Mm -hmm. So this kid picks up this book and is like, Jesus, look at this, man. This is, this stuff's going to punch me in the face. Like, <laughs> yeah. get Ron to do a cover for Rumble. You know, oh yeah, uh, comic I did for for Image and uh, with James Heron and later uh, on this run with David Rubin. Um, is it okay if I go on for a bit? 
Yeah. 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 Okay. No, so, I mean, I love Brumble, so I'd like to hear about that. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, so, uh, and then, like, I, I, I went to the page that has his, uh, uh, his commissions, and I saw that Keith Pollard and Arvell Jones were also doing commissions. I was like, oh, shit, you know? <laughs> I want to get all three of these guys to do covers. And then, and Matt Baker figures into this, as does AC Hollingsworth. And then I'm going to get, I'm going to do two more covers that pay tribute or homage to uh, Baker and AC Hollingsworth. And I'll get African American artists to do those. And I got Chris Bruner to do the Matt Baker because, you know, <laughs> and then I got uh, Sanford Green to do the AC Hollingsworth cover. But uh, Ron, um, uh, Keith, and Arvell all did self-tributes, tributes to stuff they had done in the 70s and 80s, oh, nice. uh, just using Rumble characters in the place of Thor or Amazing Man or, uh, or the Avengers, you know. Um, and the idea, of course, is, was to raise awareness of African-American creators who people really weren't paying attention to, or these guys wouldn't be doing commissions, they'd be getting work, you know? Mm. And um, I, unfortunately the book wasn't selling that well by that point, but I got these five covers that, you know, highlighted to however many people were buying the book, I'd like to think that say 50% of them, whatever those numbers are, were like, who the fuck are these guys? You know, and they hadn't seen them before. And then a smaller percentage of them would go look for their stuff, you know? so. That's what this is all about that we're talking about today is sort of a furtherance of that, you know? I got you. Rumble, oh crap, I think it's like 11 through 15. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with the second volume with David Rubin. Ah, okay. I was, I was, I was curious. I, was like, I want to see these covers that you're talking about. <laughs> oh, they're, they're, they're easy to find. You yeah. Know? Um, somewhere, hold on. Oh yeah, hold on a second. This is Arvell's. Hold on. You can see that. Mm. Oh, let me bring it up. Yeah. There's the sweet spot. Oh wow. There we go. That's, that. great. that's great. Number twelve. That's number twelve. And it's, oh, uh, these are gorgeous. I'm looking at them now. Yeah, wow. so am I. Yeah. I'll make, I'll make sure I put them in. They're all, they'll all be in here. Okay. Keith <laughs> is probably my favorite. Um, yeah, and we got Kevin Nolan to ink them, and then we got Bill Sienkiewicz to ink Ron's. Um, <laughs> Mike's yeah. Okay, Mike's going to be fighting you to try to find that one. <laughs> He's a big Pink fan, so you just... Yeah, there you go. It. Now I'm buying that <laughs> Um. Yeah, it was it was a it was a blast. It was it was a lot of fun. I unfortunately I couldn't find African American or even black inkers uh, for those books. But um, Arvell, uh, Kevin Nolan really wanted to ink uh, Keith Pollard, and I think Arvell Arvell wanted Scott Williams, but Scott Williams couldn't do it. And so I said, "Well, how about you know Kevin Nolan?" He said, "Yes, yes." So. Um, yeah, it was, it was, but you know, the point isn't so much who's inking it. The point is that these guys are recognized and, um, and Matt Baker and AC Hollingsworth's names are coming out off the lips of at least a few more people than they were before they saw these books. So, yeah. Like you can see, I'm not fucking around when I say I like to share. <laughs> no, I, I, we love, we love hearing that, like, just how much you get behind. Okay, I want to support, but also you truly do like the stuff. It's not like, oh, hey, I'm I'm just trying to win a badge to support support these guys. You're like, no, I, I really want because they need to be recognized. I mean, yeah, you know, man. I've heard yeah. Matt Baker's name said a ton, but I've you're the well, Mike did, and then you, because of your comments and your your uh, Instagram, I hear, oh, he's an African American cr uh, comic book. I'm like, he's still he's amazing. Period. But that just makes it even better because knowing of just the time period that he was doing yeah, that. the time he had to do that. Yeah, and he was, knowing he was probably the only one until yeah. – and even then, after him, it was just bullpen guys that never even got credit for anything. Yeah. So, I mean, when was the next time there was a, a big-name black creator after Baker and Hollingsworth? I mean, it couldn't have been – it had to be 
a while, Billy right? Graham in the seventies, probably. Yeah, right. Or like Dennis Cowan, or like those guys, maybe. Well, Billy Billy Graham was huge in the seventies. I mean, you guys yeah. don't remember, obviously, but Billy Graham was big. You know, uh, they, you know, he was not. Well, we'll talk more about Billy later, but because um, <laughs> that's my third cover. But uh, but yeah, we're talking about like twenty some years in between. Not that Matt Baker was ever mainstream, but you didn't have to be mainstream back then. Actually, he was mainstream. He just wasn't working for Marvel or DC. He was working for St. John and Ziff Davis and a few other guys. But back then, that didn't matter because those books were selling hundreds of thousands of copies. Yeah. You know? And yeah, I no, can't Matt, find a single one of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the, before 1945, there were paper drives. That's why you can't find any of those. But um, 54. You should be able to find it it's even after uh, even after Korea. Yep. Um, I don't know if St. John's Cinderella's Cinderella Love was selling in the hundreds of thousands, but they were easily selling, you know, tens of thousands easily. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been publishing them. Yeah. yeah. Well, those those jumbos are what? Those are Fox Syndicate, and those are yeah. Those are Sheena. So I mean, those were sell. Those are hundreds of thousands of. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Walt Disney. There. We're selling like in the millions, and everybody else had to get the breadcrumbs of a few hundred thousand. Money out of books. Ah, the days. Keith Pollard. Um, Keith Pollard. I, I think he's like the only artist to be a regular artist on Spider Man, Fantastic Four, and Thor, and overlapping on a couple of those actually, hmm. and. I, in my opinion, and uh, you can edit this out if you want to, his Fantastic Four covers and comics are so much better than George Perez's Fantastic Four covers and comics. <laughs> so, no and, lightning. Okay, you're good. <laughs> Way to get so, struck down by lightning. <laughs> so much better. Stronger compositions, stronger draftsmanship, frankly. You know? Yeah. Uh, like I was, I was looking back, to the, this is how it all started, actually. That's why I said I sort of left some stuff out. I was looking through some old FF covers for whatever reason. I think it's because Jack did a couple of covers, you know, that Perez did the interiors for. And I started noticing these Pollard covers. Like, oh, that's what fucking, oh, geez, that's what good. And I wasn't really paying attention to anybody else's except Jack's, you know, Kirby. And, um, and I was like, fuck, man, like, I should get him to do a cover. That's where it really started. But then I came in contact with Ron first, so. All right, Pete, why don't you go ahead and share? <laughs> oh, last book? Yeah, last book. Yeah. All right. Right. So my last book is definitely a modern. I, I saved this uh, for the end just because uh, I wanted to make sure I got the other two in. But uh, I went with this new Green Lantern that they have, this Far Sector book, which has uh, N.K. Jemison. I don't know if I'm saying her name correct, but uh, she's the writer. And then Jamal Campbell, who I'm, I, I do enjoy his art as well. He also uh, worked on Naomi well, for DC as well at that time. Uh, fantastic cover artist and well, makes interiors as well. But uh, he does the interiors as well as the, the A covers for this book, and uh, just good stuff. It's an interesting yeah. take on, on the whole Green Lantern thing. It's almost like a, it's like a crime, crime mystery almost. Yeah. I don't know how to, yeah, I don't how to know, fully explain it. I didn't know Jamal Campbell, but that's really good looking stuff. Yeah, yeah. well, out. speaking of Jamal Campbell. That's my third book as well. <laughs> uh, so it's this is just a he just did the cover of this one, but it's yeah. a beautiful Great. Spider Man. This is the I think these are the Age of Apocalypse covers. Um, yeah, it's Why just not? A, yeah, it's just a great variant cover or whatever. But he did like yeah, he did the Naomi, but he there's a lots of he'll have lots of random variants. You go, who is that? And they're like, oh, it's the other Campbell. Um, <laughs> but actually, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, like I've gotten to where I really like his style and like the covers that he does, and I can recognize it pretty quickly. I mean, especially when you start talking Far Sector and you start talking the Na Naomi book, um, yeah. that DC that was amazing, like that bringing in some new characters. The Far Sector, if you haven't read that, okay. it's, a, it's a great spin on Green Lantern of just being on an alien planet and then trying to solve a murder or a something so it's sort, of, it's sort of just fine instead of taking green lantern across the world it's like let's let's hang here on one planet and figure things out because cool. we've lost all emotion um yeah so no, that sounds like a, well yeah that sounds like a green lantern story i could actually <laughs> yeah read <laughs> so. pizza, pizza giant green lantern fan or was yeah and, and she and she was a the, the writer she was a novelist so she had some successful like a uh, series of novels that she wrote too so uh she knows her trade in writing yeah 
that doesn't necessarily translate to good comics. Very writing. true. Yeah. Very, very, very true. I've, I've seen some absolutely disgraceful scripts from Chloe's writing <laughs> that I've had to talk to. Well, decided, based on our conversation, how it was going tonight, that I would highlight sort of someone new. Um, and I haven't even read this book, but um, Evel Ewing, who wrote the Ironheart. Mm. I love that they chose not only a, a, a black writer, but a black woman writer to do a black woman <laughs> character. That's yeah. Um, and I think that that's great. Um, I don't. I don't know if the book is good. I know this issue got hot for a while, so it couldn't have been too bad. Um, but there's huge things on the horizon for this character, uh, and I love that already on the ground floor they're already they're already using um, black female writers and hopefully artists eventually to deal with this character moving forward. That, that would be great. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, she's a professor at University of Chicago. I think if I if I read that correctly. Um, and just just brilliant stuff. So um, I don't know. I just I just felt like this was more in line with what I should be highlighting tonight. Um, and I'm really interested to see what Marvel does with this character. I think this is one of the true organic uh, sort of changeover characters. You know, right. they've they've either um, changed the race of characters, or they've changed the sex of characters, or whatever they've done um, to differentiate the characters. Some of it feels forced, but Riri feels organic, a lot like maybe X23 did for Wolverine. They just yeah, feel yeah. like good origins that make sense, and so I hope they don't screw it up. And I hope they yeah, use, yeah. I, and I, I hope, and I hope they they continue to use black writers and black artists to do the character. Yeah. And okay, oh, well, and John, you sort of you alluded to Owsley earlier or Christopher Priest earlier. Yeah. Like when I started thinking of like, okay, when did and a black writer start writing a black character and he did black panther in 98 is when he picked that up but i okay. i was like is there one before that and i guess the bit the first ones and uh would be when uh dc did their was it the icon label or is that the the no the static and all those oh were, right were they written by was it 100 percent african-american i can't remember not 100 but yeah they were, I, I got a massive headache so oh um but like that would be the first time I can really think of then the milestone issues, which I mean, shoot, I, that static shock com uh, cartoon was one of my favorites growing up. But the interesting yeah. thing I've noticed about most of these new comics, most of them, is that uh, to find black artists, it's not too difficult, you know, in comics. But to find yeah. black writers, they've got to go recruit them from movies and universities and other places to write comics, and that just tells you how unwelcoming. Um, comics has been to African American writers since the get go. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. it yeah. sucks, but I mean, there have been there have been there, but you know, Dwayne McDuffie dies, and basically that's like mm -hmm. half the crop of African American writers available to these guys, which is like why they got to go recruit them from elsewhere. That's fucking sad. Yeah. You know? it is. Um, I I don't know why it's more welcoming for artists. I think it's because. This is incredibly harsh, but to deal with a writer, you've got to talk to him on, or her on the phone and stuff. Whereas an artist, uh, that artist just has to turn in pages, you know, has yeah. to follow what the writer says, has to be able to take notes. But if, you know, an editor has to talk to a, a, a black writer and the black writer has an opinion about what he or she is trying to do, that might become a confrontational discussion. That's just a guess, but. So for the third pick. Here we go. Here we go. Luke Cage, Hero for Hire. The great Billy Graham, uh, or as they called him at Marvel at the time, the irreverent Billy Graham. <laughs> uh, and Billy Graham is, you know, he did uh, Saber. He left uh, with, uh, what's his face? Uh, Crap, the guy who was writing Black Panther, uh, Don McGregor, and he did Saber for, I think, Eclipse or Pacific Comics. I can't remember which one. Oh, dang it, I, w I actually have Saber over here somewhere. Those, <laughs> those covers are just ridiculously fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but, I mean, look at this. You know, these characters, mm -hmm. they're all cartoonish. Mm -hmm. um, sure, and I suppose that if we look at them through a 20th century um, lens, we might even be offended by them. But, um, you know, the characters are all pretty much cartoonish. And Billy Graham, 
who, if I'm not mistaken, had previously been the art director at Warren magazines before this, because he'd done a few Warren stories. Um, and I think that Jim Warren just said, be my art director, because I think, you know, he'd driven the previous art director crazy and, uh, and he quit. <laughs> um, so Billy Graham, before he came to Marvel, had, had, had done some stuff and tremendously talented. His, his, his style is more, you know, rubbery. And so mm -hmm. the way he, I mean, look at that, look at that white fat cop over on the, on the, the uh, left uh, lower corner. And that's a cartoonish version of that guy. It's oh, sort of like the uh, character it's actor Dudley, Dudley Dickerson. And a lot of people, there we go. not, not African-Americans, by the way, but uh, uh, Dudley Dickerson was a character actor back in the 30s and 40s. And most of his roles, he would play this uh, buffoon, you know, which I, I can understand why a lot of African-Americans of today would be offended by that. But number one, African-Americans weren't seeing any people of color on the screen. Mm -hmm. So seeing Dudley Dickerson meant something. Matt Moreland is another guy who, who actually, like, he was an A-list among African-American communities and theaters, A-list character actor who could sell, just by putting his name big on the poster, could sell African-American crowds on it. Matt Moreland wasn't quite as broad as Dudley Dickerson. But my point about bringing up Dudley Dickerson is Dudley Dickerson did a bunch of Three Stooges shorts they're all fucking buffoons. So <laughs> as a result, his, his, his role doesn't stand out quite as cartoonishly. And I have African-American friends who celebrate Dudley Dickerson's birthday because like, hey, there was some on the screen who we could identify with, who we could laugh at and laugh with, right? So I'm not saying that you should be laughing at these characters. I'm saying that this guy presented everybody in his same, relatively speaking, cartoonish style, which got tamped down quite a bit when he was doing Black Panther a little bit later. But for these, like, look at that afro. Not that it was unusual in the 70s to see somebody with an afro like that, right? But it seems cartoonish uh, today. But, you know, he had a broader style, and it was a brush that he painted every character in the comics with. I absolutely love Billy Graham. His work is just amazing. He had to put up with so much shit at Marvel. Yeah. You know, they would make all kinds of fucking jokes about him. Uh, by the time Christopher Priest, Jim Owsley got there, that shit had, what didn't disappear if you read Jim Owsley. Ah, fuck. I, I knew Jim Owsley as Jim Owsley. That's why I keep doing that, and I apologize. Oh, no, if you're you, fine. If you read Christopher Priest, well, I don't want him to hear this and be pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll, if he's actually watching this, then we'll be happy. No. Yeah, All right. please. <laughs> if if, uh, if you read Christopher Priest's blog, you'll hear about how he came into Marvel and the role that the great Larry Hama played in his professional career and blah, blah, blah. It was still there for Christopher Priest, but I mean, Billy Graham like took it in the teeth all the time that he was there, but mm -hmm. He loved comics, clearly, and he wanted to do comics. And the first opportunity he got to get away from Marvel with Sabre, he took. And why the fuck not? Yeah. The funny thing about Billy Graham is he was a very accomplished artist. And he had an opportunity before he came to Marvel or Warren to do African-American characters, but primarily in softcore porn magazines. <laughs> I actually own a large painting uh, by Billy Graham that is very funny, but I could never show anybody. <laughs> um, and and they were and he painted African American characters. He, he could do that for these softcore porn magazines because they could sell directly to these African American markets. Now he was very fortunate to some degree because he got to do uh, Luke Cage. I think he inked the first issue over George Tusca, and George Tusca was one of his mentors. And you can kind of see that, especially in the white character's face in the lower left. And you can see it on the splash page. We didn't talk about Ron Wilson's, uh, we should have, uh, story in that issue of The Thing, where The Thing is fighting with the puppet master in his mind, but then when he wakes up, he realizes that he's been fighting, you know, in the streets and he's knocked over buildings and shit. Again, you needed Ron for that yeah. kind of like, like just 
you know, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? I kind of classic art, you know? Mm. Um, and you can see some of George Tuska's, uh, what I believe is a Polish suit. Um, I may be wrong about that, but uh, I really like George Tuska. A lot of people don't. Anyway, uh, you can see some of, uh, some of the residual stuff in the uh, Luke Cage stuff that uh, uh, Billy Graham did after Tuska left the book. Uh, a lot of that goes away by the time he's doing, doesn't, not entirely, but you know, obviously the structure is still there because he learned a lot about structure from Tuska because Tuska, Tuska was, he was one of those guys, sort of like Ron Wilson, who really could put structure into the comic, for the storytelling and for the, uh, for the draftsmanship, you know, the composition of the panels, but also in the physicality of the characters. And he carries some of that over, but it looks less like Tuska by the time he started doing Black Panther. So um, obviously I love all these guys. The problem with, with Billy is that he's dead. And so that I, I really got to talk him up because man, he ain't here to be able to talk for himself. Yep. And he did work on the first uh, 12 issues of Vampirella. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's, I believe, his first professional gig was either in Vampirella or Creepy. Yeah, uh, Vampy number one, actually. Yeah. So, supposedly, and then he did Creepy later. Yeah, okay. And then he became, for a brief period of time, maybe six months or something, art director for Warren. Yeah. You know, and I don't know anything about the guy, like personally, but I never heard anybody say, say anything bad about him. Yeah. You know? The fact that he could put up with the bullshit, he's sort yeah. of like the Jackie Robinson in some ways in comics. <laughs> The yeah. fact that he could put up with the bullshit that he had to with Marvel during the seventies, like the irreverent Billy Graham, that's funny, but that's not the only thing they call him. Yeah. From the day is going to be the bicentennial. And I haven't heard anybody talking about doing anything for this. So I literally contacted people. They contacted me because they heard about it. I put the whole fucking thing together. I art directed it. I edited it. And I got it on the shelf. Well, I didn't get it on the shelves, but I got a hard copy in my hand yeah. on the day of his birthday. And it, it, it hit shelves five days later. So in a year, I did all that. Wow. Nice. Uh, so that's so. what would be your favorite in that, that Melville book? Uh, and Mike here, he's an, actually an English teacher. So like, uh, show him the show I don't tell you my book. problems, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> show him your book uh, that you just did because it's, it's awesome. Like, and he's a, it's Melville. He did an entire... Ooh. Oh yeah, here oh, let me uh, also yeah, that, so we can get Oh that's there. great. Oh that's really cool. Is that out? Oh yeah, it's been out for more than a year, but you should oh, be able to get really it cool. from a Wave Blue World. You should be able to get it, I think, on Amazon. Cool. <clears throat> if not, contact me. I've got a few copies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had so much fun doing it. It was a huge fucking pain in the ass. I had <laughs> so much fun doing it. Uh, that I decided I wanted to try to pursue editing, and I can't find any gigs editing. So <laughs> there you go, man. Well, see, you just got to find find your next passion project for your next and just produce well, I yourself. did, and then and then the pandemic hit, and not there wasn't a, a single publisher who wanted to touch it. Uh, the illustrated celebration of the works of Herman Melville that was that was a lot of fun. I decided I wanted to do a bicentennial uh, celebration of Melville's work for his bicentenary of his birthday. And uh, I, at first I thought it would just be a pamphlet, but then all these fucking artists started reaching out to me. And, and, and there's some great stuff. You know, there's some great, great artists that I got in touch with specifically because of this book. I, I also reached out to a lot of my friends, a lot of my friends worked on it. But mostly it's people that I didn't know before, like this uh, Italian artist who's absolutely incredible. His, his name is uh, Cosimo Miorelli. Um, and I think he does a really early piece for the, uh, the chapter. Which one is it? Oh, I don't fucking know. It's been a long time. It's been more than a year since I looked at this guy. <laughs> uh, but the funny thing about it is that almost everybody wanted to do Moby Dick, of course. You know? Yeah. Except all the Europeans wanted to do... Bartleby the Scrivener. Oh, so I, fantastic story. Yeah, but I had like six Bartlebys, and it's like a fucking 30-page story. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had to say no more Bartlebys, no more Moby Dicks. And I had to – I was very lucky. I had to choose different chapters for Moby Dick and, uh, because I had to – you know, I had to edit the fucking thing. I didn't just have yeah, to, you to make the, the artist. Yeah, I had to find what, – what I did was I had uh, – 
I'm thinking of the book like that matters. Um, I had to find a passage to go with the art. So like the facing page, you turn the page, you're looking at the art and you turn your head and there on the left hand facing page is the artist on top and their passage. And of course, you know, from, from what book it came or what letter it came from. One illustrates a letter uh, from uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne to somebody else about Mel. That's cool. That's yeah. Cool. So it, it, it took some doing, you know, but it was, it was a blast. It was really, really hard. It was a huge pain in the ass. You're dealing with like 60 different personalities, you know, and, and I said, look, this is the fucking deadline. I don't get them by then. That's it. Fuck you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it has to come out on time. Yeah. And, uh, that's, that's insane to me. Yeah, but I did it, you know, and I mean, they did most of the work. They yeah, did all the still, they did all the work, but getting them to get work in on yeah. time and making sure, like, I just pulled up uh, a bl the the publishers because you, you had they they have four different images up that you can look for the book. Right, those paintings are gorgeous. The, yeah, I was like, oh, my, like I'm gonna probably try to track it down and buy it. I might buy it from the <laughs> site, but uh, it's gore. I, it reminds me of uh, there's uh, I read there was some book I picked up where. Artists took scientific principles and they created this. That someone wrote a passage that described the scientific principle, and then these uh, modern artists created painted cool. paintings. I like that. It's a it's a oh, beautiful cool. book. Uh, I have it on my shelf. It's just beautiful to look at. But it's also like I understand it now because this artist interpreted the it, the, the whatever the the concept of electrons and new uh, neutrons and all. But I mean more comp dark matter and all that. And you're like, what the hell? But, it's all yeah. dark to me, my friend. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it does. Um, I'll tell you, the, the funny thing is, is that, like, I, I reached out to a bunch of people, and uh, a couple of people, like, I got something, like, the first, like, I sent it out, and a couple of hours later, I got the first piece. I was like, holy hmm. shit. Jesus. That was, that's, <laughs> that's, the front, that's the frontest piece. Um, and then, I mean, like, the next day, I got... Whale. <laughs> What? And actually, it's just Melville in profile. Oh. So it's a real nice. No. <laughs> and then the next day, I got a piece from uh, Hunt Emerson, who is like one of my all-time favorite artists, but sort of a friend too. We, we, we've we've met and we've communicated, and I bought artwork from him. And you know, he sent a, an email to me and said, "I've never even read Moby Dick." But this sounds like a great idea. And he's just sitting in the <laughs> and it's gorgeous. And I put it in. And there was a lot of that sort of thing where <clears throat> people um, I knew just wanted to do it. And then other people. All right. John, thank you so much for joining us, uh, for sharing. We're talking black creators and just. I've, I'm the center going, okay, I'm, I'm looked up like 30 names that you've dropped and gone. <laughs> I'm hoping Pete finds pictures to go along with them so I can go, okay, this is, I've been on Wikipedia, sadly, looking up all these different names you dropped. <laughs> I've learned a whole lot. Um, Good. And you, you, and then I always learn from Pete and Mike just as we share and talk to different covers and different people. Um, but I, I hopefully, just guys, if you don't follow him on Instagram, follow him on Instagram. He brings awareness to so many beautiful artists out there um, mm -hmm. and just people that I, I know it's not, it's not your J Scott Campbell's and your, uh, and your Adam Hughes's yeah. that need the help. Those names, you know, that, the names, you know, it's these guys that you don't know that he brings awareness to. And I, I've, I've, it, I've learned and started following a few more artists because of him um, on that. But also I'm finding pulp books from the 1940s that I'm now having to track down because it's a gorgeous cover. Uh, I think he posted one the other day of some skull, thing i'm like yeah. damn it uh by but, uh Clevin graves yeah yeah it was it was gorgeous mike you should follow go back through his I, instagram and find it it's yeah i will yeah i i started following you john right, right before we right before you showed up <laughs> Chris was telling me about it. i was like oh really i'm, I'm on it i'm on it following you before we started but cool. yes thank you so much for for all your time tonight and your stories and, and uh and just your your honesty uh, actually which is rare these days so yeah. uh, uh, thank you for that Appreciate you that. Know, well, okay. I, I'm an old man. But fucking people don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> um.